I am finding uh, the self-care is so key. And, and as I've taken better care of self, um, it's amazing how many other things are better taken care of. And I think, uh, I think there's a point where you just, you have to put self first. And when I say self first, this is not selfish. This is like, what does self need so that self can give to others? Do you remember how things started to shift for you? Like, was there a turning point where you started to make your life easier or more in alignment with what you want versus, you know, what it was before? Yeah, it was never this way, actually. Um, I grew up as a, a struggler, a warrior. I, I always like to say I come from a long line of warriors. <laughs> you, know? Oh. I, you know, no kidding. I mean, my, my family thinks I'm a little crazy. Um, in the sense that they never quite understood me because uh, I was always an adventurer for sure and um, seeking a better way. Uh, I came from a family that didn't really see a lot of possibilities. Uh, I was the first one to graduate college. Um, you know, I just always had this part of me that was not like my family. I probably was what they might call the black sheep, but I wouldn't quite call myself that. And so my answer is no, I, I was, you know, I f kind of fell into that family lineage and pattern, um, meaning I had to really work on myself. I had to find myself. I had to take courses and work with coaches and, and go deep within uh, so that I released some of my trauma, some of the past. Um, okay, let's say all the past as much as possible. Right. Uh, you know, and I, listen, there's still moments, believe me, I'm not Pollyanna and everything's perfect. Um, and even on this journey, I sat there in Jordan going, oh my God, what am I doing here? You know, maybe I really should go home. This is a little crazy. Then the other, you know, it's like that, it's like that movie where they go, well, if, and then that, and, mm -hmm. and you're kind of going both sides. But what I know is I am practiced enough. And, you know, when they say spiritual practice, they're not kidding. You know, it right. is practice. You know, I wish I could say everything is so natural and quick. No, it isn't. I struggle at times. I get a little down at times. Um, I have to like uh, recreate myself at times is how I see it. I remember waking up, I don't know, it was a week ago and all of a sudden I was like, all this fear was coming over me and, and feeling things. Sometimes they're not my own, by the way. Sometimes there are other people's fears and I'm highly sensitive. So I might be picking up things. And so I woke up and I felt this, I call them a fear storm, right? And I went, okay, all right, I'm feeling this fear storm. Now, what can I do? All right, let's see. I'm going to walk outside. I'm going to walk outside for 10 minutes. Like I give myself 10 minute things to do because I know it won't overwhelm me. Um, and so, all right, let's walk outside for 10 minutes. Let's smell the air. All right, good. All right, starting to calm down. Good. You know, what, what next? And I'll take it in like, what's next? What's next? Yeah. And if I have to, I'll go take a, a long bath. You know, I am finding uh, the self care is so key. And, yeah. and as I've taken better care of self, um, it's amazing how many other things are better taken care of. And I think, uh, I think there's a point where you just, you have to put self first. And when I say self first, this is not selfish. This is like, what does self need so that self can give to others, right? right. And, and I found before I would give from cup half empty. I would give from cup exhausted. Right, <laughs> um, right. And I'm not yeah. saying that doesn't still happen times. Listen, we're human and things happen and sometimes our schedules are full and we're tired and all of these things are true, right? So the question is like, you know, maybe what's one thing I'll do during those exhaustion days? Well, you know, I take a dance class online right now every morning at nine. That means I'm not talking to anyone else till my yeah. dance class is finished. And boy, that starts my day differently. You know, and, and I think these things we have in our schedule, including for me, it's a date with me, you know, what do yeah. I need to do? That's the part where I say take care of self. And then yeah. we get to take care of others. It's so true. If you're, if someone's thirsty and you want to give them water, but your cup or your, you know, your pitcher of water is empty, you know, then, then it's, 
then there's nothing more to give. But if you can take care, when, when you take care of yourself, then that can be replenished. And then you have more water to quench more thirst, you know, using the metaphor there, but it, it's so, so true. And, and often we look at that as being selfish. I, I do remember when I first started meditating, I was still working way too many hours and my wife and my, my son was born already. So we were starting to be parents and my, my wife looks at me, she's like, really? You're going to start meditating now, like one more thing to not be around us, you know, because I was definitely more workaholic guy at that time. And I had to veto it, even though it was painful for the moment. I had to look at my wife and say, yes, I think I really need to do this. And after doing that, it actually made the turn for me because then I started to reflect more, be calmer more, not as quick to anger or snappiness and all these things. And so uh, uh, months later, I, I think it was less than six months, I remember my son was quite young. We're having a brunch on a Sunday. And that was the hardest time actually for me. Like during work days, it was easy for me to fit the meditation because I had a ritual. Then on the weekend, I would slack off. So on a Sunday, I'm sitting there and my son just looked over me while we're eating. And he said, dad, did you meditate today? Oh. And then I said, no. And he said, yeah, I can tell. Like, wow. and, then, and then my wife looked at me and she said, me too. And then after that, it was, it was a whole turn at the table because it was like, hey, Steve, I think you should go meditate. <laughs> so it was the opposite of like, <laughs> hey, you're going to add this in your life. They started to notice. And then I started to notice. Now, Jill, it's been over 10 years of meditating every day. And it, it's like you said, it's a practice. I, it didn't start out that smooth. Even now, is there, are there a day that I'll miss? Even now, maybe it is, but I'll tell you, it's way less because so practice it, it, it you know, it's not normal anymore to miss that. And, but it, it, it fills up my cup. And then I have so many more resources for being a husband, for being a father, for helping my clients because I, I filled it up first, right? Absolutely. I mean, my meditation's at 8.30 every morning, right? And then if I have something else, then it'll move it to eight, but it stays first in the morning and then that dance class. And then I serve people, right? And I am having a blast. Now, I have to tell you, it took a pandemic to get me to pay attention to that. And I purposely am saying this because, you know, as my, and, and the truth is I've always been a possibility person and always been uh, a wonderful adventure and all these things. But what I noticed with the pandemic and the slowing down supposedly, that, although I'm not that much slower, right, is, right. Uh, is not that what... I, I know I jumped on you there, but I'm I'm not either. Like I'm still active, but I, but the reflection. So go back on onto this. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. No, what I'm what I mean is is that my schedule is still full, and it's more full of me putting me in. And so what I notice is my first hour and a half of my of my day, let's call it, or at least the first hour before I start connecting and talking to everybody is um, is. Full. I full. I filled myself back up with meditation and dance. In my case, in this case, um, and how powerful that is. And you know what? In the evening, what I did was I boxed myself in because I saw like what this could do if I went into fear or I had days that were unstructured. And then at six o'clock, I've got other things that fill my soul. I listen to singing bowls at, and I, there's a woman who plays harp and, you know, there's, so there's all these beautiful things that are right now going on and that I am enjoying and putting in my life. Um, and it's been wonderful. I'm just, I feel really um, like this was the, uh, what's that, what's that expression? Icing on the cake. Right. Um, it's sort of a funny thing to say, but this has forced, this COVID stuff is forced for me putting the icing on the cake because it's forced me literally to, um, to slow down in a way that I put me in. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. And then now I feel so much uh, more able to, uh, to serve in, in an even better way than before to my clients and be a better friend and, and uh, all those wonderful things, right? That, that I always wanna do anyway. 
Hey there, I want to give you something really big. It's called Clear Path to Customers. It's the way that we get the right language to get the right client. I like to call them your wow clients so that you can have more results, more revenue, more raving fans, and more referrals. And I want to give this to you absolutely free. And all you have to do is go to stevenoplaton.com to check it out. Or you can look at the description here. We'll put the details there. As always, remember, choose gratitude and create freedom.